Here we go. Mm -hmm. You lost access to your Facebook. Oh, hold on a second. Let me get ourselves back in. We are going to be broadcasting Mind Body TV live today. Um, sorry about that. Let's get out of that. See if we can make this work. Um, your email or phone number. <laughs> All right, we're just logging in. So give me a couple minutes here. Enter the password. Hi, everybody. Hang on, stay tuned for just a sec. Uh, here we go. All right, we have a really interesting topic today. I'm super excited. I think it's going to be really, really awakening for a lot of people. Mm. Okay. Here we go. Oh, that's not what I want to do. All right. Mm. And we're live. We are live. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. We are live. Are we live? Nope. Can you guys see me? Is this even working? <laughs> Requires you to go live for 11 to 9. Um, am I here? Can you see me? Because it's not going into Facebook, but I think, I think we're live. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, full start. Here we go. <laughs> so um, I'm Dr. Kim Doramo. For those of you who don't know who I am, this is Mind Body TV. Um, I'm sorry it's not broadcasting in the mind body community. It looks like today. So I tried to get that in there, but, um, what I'm going to share about today might be kind of, um, it will be really awakening for everyone. It might be a little startling because sometimes we can really go into fear when we find out like the bigger picture of what's happening that we didn't know that we thought it was this way, but it's actually this way. Wait a minute. What? And I will just tell you right off the bat, there is nothing that you need to fear, <laughs> except sometimes you think like fear itself, that's what's going to create the most disruption in your experience. Um, but as a physician, I've seen how much power we really are. We are so powerful that we can like give our power away and experience a really chaotic life, even though we're sovereign beings, even though we are absolutely meant to have a life of abundance, a life of ease, a life of serenity, a life of great, great joy and expansion. That is what life is here to be. Now, it's so amazing that we can experience it as if that's not true, as if we're in lack, as if we're not provided for, as if we're not good enough, uh, as if life is actually a nightmare instead of a dream. Um, but that really is just a testament to our power. If we give our power away, if we buy into false beliefs, if we buy into fears, we're going to experience those things as true. Um, so, for, so welcome for everyone. I love hearing where you're tuning in from. Um, I know we have people, I think we counted and it was like 48 countries who are regularly tuning in, which is so, so exciting. Um, so I, I love hearing from you and, and where you're tuning in from. I'm going to speak on today. The topic is the emperor has no clothes. Should we really be following medical authorities. Okay, so what are the medical authorities? Um, who are they? How did they come into place? Uh, what is actually happening here? So I want to share a little bit about the history of medicine. And this is in, in the next book I'm working on. It's right up front. It's like in the second chapter, um, really the history of medicine, the real history behind this quote system, healthcare system, which most of us has begun to kind of like head scratcher and notice this is really a disease care system. It's not actually a healthcare system at all. This is actually a giant business slash monopoly, not actually um, for the greater good. You don't necessarily notice that until you pause and look. But I put it, I'm putting it right up front in the book because until we know what we're looking at, it's really hard for us to see what the solutions are. Meaning when we think this is the authority and obviously they would know and if they don't know about this it must be because it isn't important if they don't know about that it must be because it doesn't work when you actually look at like you pull back the curtain who's actually standing in the room with all of the controls you're like 
oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. There's no way I'm going to listen to that person. I'm going to bring the power back myself and start listening, uh, trusting my own wisdom, thinking with my own mind. What do I know? What makes sense to me? What sounds right to me? So when we give our power away, which is kind of like a universal thing I've seen with patients I've worked with or individuals I've worked with who've come through a journey with chronic illness, chronic disease, or like the, the unnamed disease that no one even knows what's going on with me is that they're giving their power away to others, right? Like, I have no idea what's going on. Please help me. Please tell me. Okay, I didn't find the answer there. Let me keep searching. Let me keep finding. Let me go to the, the right person. It's like the, the are you my mother syndrome. Are you my mother? Do you have my answer? Do you have my magic answer? Are you the one who's going to do it for me? And we really put our power outside ourselves. This will never work to create true health and healing because the alignment for the body to be healthy and whole, we've got to bring our power back in to us. I am sovereign. I have my own inner GPS. I have my own access to wisdom. And I can look at what I'm seeing and have the awareness of what's going to be a contribution to me. And if you start asking what's going to be a contribution to me, you got to kind of relax your body to let the awareness in. And you stop asking, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Help me fix it. You're going to have a very different journey, a very different experience, and a very different result. Okay, so when we take our power back, like, wait a minute, I got a perfectly healthy system of intelligence in here. Maybe I need to figure out how to connect with it, absolutely. navigate the technology of it, absolutely, uh, but I'm not gonna keep giving my power away and looking outside myself like someone else knows what's best for me and I don't know. And that is exactly what happens when we go into fear. So the number one thing, if there were like five things you needed to do to like manipulate a global society, this would be the number one thing. Well, this would be the, the sort of the last thing that you got to make sure is a catch all. Make sure that person stays in fear so they will never know they are sovereign. If someone wakes up and they realize like, wait a minute, got my own thing going on here. I'm good. They're going to leave an abusive relationship. They're going to leave a manipulating person. And that's one of the main, main sort of like five characteristics of what it takes to rule a global society. The first one is, <laughs> this is not what today's talk is about, but I think I'm going to touch on it. You've got to disconnect people from their sexuality. Our sexual energy is actually energy currents that run through the body from the bottom up, from the pelvis up, the kundalini energy, and has a dramatic effect on healing and our body and our nervous system, on our immune system, on our digestion, and on our brain. Meaning we begin to see things we didn't even see. Like you got blinders on and you're like, ah, help me, help me. Where's the tree? I got to run from the tiger. That's all I care about. That's all I'm looking at. And we sort of miss the landscape of the very obvious truth. So disconnecting people from their sexual energy, shutting down their brains and keeping them in fear is actually going to have people suppress their power, not have access to it and develop all kinds of problems and pathologies. But the thing I did want to share in this um, broadcast today is what is the real history behind this healthcare system? Now, for those of you who know me, oh, sorry, this is... Uh, I have been practicing mind-body medicine. I've studied it for decades and decades. I was trained as an ER doctor, so trauma, critical care, uh, really acute care medicine. I think that is one of the best uses of the allopathic system. Allopathic is um, the, the pathology. It's, it's you're basically other, other outside of me to solve the pathology. I've got to take that medication or that chemical. I've got to have that surgery. Someone's doing something to my body physically in order to fix the physical problem. This is awesome for acute care situations, for emergencies, for traumas. Absolutely. It's really, really, really not helpful in any way, shape or form for chronic illness, which is why that's like the thing that's growing so rampant ever since this system was put in place and regulated this way, meaning doctors were not allowed to practice outside of this model. So what happened 
over a hundred years ago, doctors were practicing what they found to be worthy, meaning they would study medicine was through mentorship. They would look into, whoa, what's that guy doing? That's amazing. I want to learn that. Oh, what's happening over here? This is curing that. I want to learn more about why. How does that work? How does it help? How can I implement that for my patients? They would stay open, curious, and explore. Now this system was unregulated. Everyone's doing their own independent thing. Maybe they'd share a little here, a little there, but they were essentially unregulated. Doctors were free to practice as they deemed worthy. Their education was mostly mentorship. It was not a systemic, everyone learns this is the right thing and here's how we do it. And lots of wealthy investors came along and it was not medical doctors who came along to say, whoa, whoa, let's help people out here. Let's unify under one agenda, it was actually um, journalists who knew they could sway the mainstream into doing things a certain way and make a great profit. So nothing wrong with businesses that are profiting. And this has become a multi-monopolized business that we call the healthcare system. It's monopolized because there are leaders who are on one side, like the pharmaceutical industry, making money from pharmaceuticals. Again, nothing wrong with making money in business. And there's the other side who are like, let's say industries putting toxins into the water, the soil, the air, profiting from people getting sick. And it turns out they're all in cahoots together. Like they're the same people. Um, and there's lots and lots of evidence for this. More and more of this is coming out now. It's easy to find. I have a feeling this video has a high probability of being censored, but this is the time that people are ready to hear this. And so this is what I'm gonna share. Um, when they came together to create this monopoly, yes, we have now regulated what can and cannot be practiced. Meaning, hey, all of that, nope, that's not the right way to do it. Here's the right way to do it. And it was based on what it was uh, proposed was, we're protecting people. We're protecting people from the bad guys who don't know what they're doing. So that's great. Oh, thank you so much for protecting me. But you got to look at what this is based on. It's based on the idea that we can't think for ourselves, that we're going to be duped, that we're going to have bad things happen to us, and that we need some patriarch to come in and do it for us, do the thinking for us, do the monitoring for us, do the regulation for us, and create a system that works, quote, for our benefit. Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much for doing that for my benefit. But you want to look at like, well, who's actually in charge here? Who is the one taking such good care of me that I don't even have to think for myself because they're making sure nothing bad happens to me? That's where we want to look and kind of like pull back the curtain on the industry of medicine. So there's a lot written out there that, you know, books have been censored. <laughs> books have been prohibited. Um, we're seeing it now because we're, I mean, this is hundred, hundreds of hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago, like turn of the 1900s. Um, you couldn't really see this happening. One of the main agendas that the American Medical Association, the AMA was established for was um, basically to get the chiropractic industry out of the competitive equation. Before this um, monopoly was formed, doctors, like I said, were free to practice on their own. There was a huge proportion of doctors who used chiropractic model as a way to help heal patients. They had amazing results. They had profitable businesses, uh, people healed. So it wasn't because this stuff wasn't working that it got taken out of the equation. It was because it was a threat to the monopoly. There is history for this. There are documented conspiracies the AMA was found guilty of decades later that started back then. Um, they also took out homeopaths, which was actually a major part of the equation of what doctors were doing, right? Some doctors would do allopathic, some doctors would do surgery, some doctors would do um, osteopathy, some doctors would do chiropractic, some doctors would do homeopathy. There was like a buffet of what you as a practitioner found was worthy of investigation and practice. And there was also a buffet as a patient of like, yeah, I think that guy knows what he's doing. I'm gonna go see what he can do for me. Oh, I think that approach sounds right for me. I'm gonna go in that direction and you had a choice. 
So this system came in in the guise of like, we're going to take care of you. We have your best interest at hearts. But what it did is created a patriarchal, quote, protection system. Don't worry. We know it's best. We're going to make sure all the quacks and they actually termed the uh, coined the term quacks. We're going to make sure all these quacks who don't know what they're doing get out of the equation. But the actual history is the AMA was started by two guys who were journalists not physicians, not mentored and trained as physicians, never even saw patients who put up uh, what are actually like quack advertisements. I One guy was like, I treat women's health disorders. And the other guy was like a general practitioner. And they went and made lots of money doing all kinds of things that were not necessarily helpful for anyone. These are the two guys that actually started the AMA, the American Medical Association, who realized like, well, we can get the monopoly here and running it as a business get these other people out of the equation and like make space for what we want to do. They had to get in cahoots with political figures because now, you know, we get to fly under the radar and make sure people are listening. They had to get in cahoots with major educational systems like all the medical schools. So they had very, very wealthy funders um, who were in on the business, funded all the major medical programs. So all of a sudden, the medical schools that didn't get funded, like chiropractic, homeopathy, osteopathic, um, all these what are now called alternative because the mainstream storyline is they're not the real thing. We're the real thing. So all this other very valid evidence-based medicine that has been shown to be very helpful and curative is brushed to the side and the schools are taken over because they don't have the funding they need. So the ones that got the funding for like the research and the high-end laboratory equipment um, were the schools that were willing to adapt this allopathic model. So not going to go so, so much into all the history here, but you can read about this and learn about this. There's way more than enough documented history, but the point is it was um, to choose for us what's best for us, right? So like, hey, don't go to that guy. He's going to mess you up and break your neck. Let's do this. And we're going to give you this pill and save the day. There's never been shown to ever actually be a cure for any disease in the allopathic model. But the storyline is, well, you know, cancer is going to just keep happening and we're just going to have to keep investing billions of research dollars to keep trying to find the answer. 97% death rate with chemotherapy that's been funded in like the billions and billions and billions of dollars in research and it's like decades and decades later we're in the war on cancer war is very profitable the business is thriving but the people are not my invitation and why i wanted to share this session today is are you ready to begin to think for yourself because that patriarchal system is based on you being in fear you being disconnected with the wisdom of your body, you being in the dark about what's actually happening and that you really are okay. You have the immune system. There's a million things you can do to strengthen your immune system. So whatever virus might come along, whatever cancer might come along, you can actually reverse this and heal completely. Now, now like I said, if someone is not kept in fear, they're not going to be able to be manipulated. So one of the major things in this monopoly that they are also associated with is the media. <laughs> You've got to own the media. So education, media, medical system, uh, keep people in, um, keep people disconnected from their sexual energy, sensuality, because your wisdom is going to speak to you through the senses, feeling your truth, hearing your truth, knowing your truth, sensing your truth, seeing the truth. The more you disconnect from your sensory system, the more you can manipulate, be manipulated, um, and you're kind of like putting the power outside of you. So the whole premise of this, because I had to really think through this, like, all right, keep going to devil's advocate, right? Someone's trying to help us and censoring information. Like I had someone in my life say, we should be censored because this is misinformation. And I was like, whoa, where does that thinking come from? It comes from the premise we can't think for ourselves. We can't choose for ourselves. We will be manipulated and lied to and go down the wrong path if someone doesn't control and protect us. Okay, is that true? Hmm. Are you willing 
to trust your own wisdom that if something isn't a fit for you, maybe someone's lying, you know, like some charlatan out there or some quote quack. And are you willing to trust that you'll either know and be aware so you don't go in that direction or be totally clueless and have that happen so you get clarity for next time? When you have clarity, it's a huge gift. Once you've had that experience, you're not going to, I mean, maybe it's five times, maybe it's 10 times until you're like, oh, wait a minute, I do have this little inkling. Let me start listening to it, right? Because every bad relationship I've been in, or like, I wouldn't say bad, every relationship that didn't go the way I wanted it to, I knew in the very beginning. I knew on the first date, <laughs> but I wasn't willing to listen to what I knew. So I'd have that experience and then I'd have that experience again and then I'd have that experience again. And finally it was like, I've got to trust my knowing. It's always there. It's there from time zero. Now I have the experience that gives me the clarity that I'm willing to trust my knowing. So I make new choices. Either way, it's my system I'm trusting. It's I'm trusting that my system will learn, which I talked about last week in the inner game of healing, that your system is learning what it needs to do to complete the, you know, being a better at a tennis player or being a whole and complete person embodying your truth, learning the healing, it's the same thing. Your body knows how to heal itself. So do I trust that my system has the ability to learn, even if I am like stumbling around, or do I keep thinking, no, I need someone to protect me from the bad guys? Because that is the number one thing that's going to keep us from awakening to see like what's already there. So the emperor has no clothes. You obviously, most of you know the story that, you know, everyone's like that, that, that they fool the emperor. Oh, this is the greatest tailor in the world. Oh, he's so amazing. Oh, look at these beautiful clothes. And the emperor's like, I don't see anything. And now I'm standing here naked, but let me just go along with it because why? Shame. <laughs> right? So that's the number one thing you've got to do to rule a global society and keep people in the dark. When you do connect with your wisdom, it's shameful. When you do connect with your sexual energy, the ignition of life force in our body, make sure they know it's shameful. Make sure they feel shame. Make sure they think it's wrong. Make sure they shame each other. The woman holds the womb. The womb is the interface between the human and the divine. And we know this, the little babies, you're like, oh, you're a little blessing from God. We know this. What comes through the womb is pure divinity. It's pure manifestation. Make sure that woman shuts down her sexuality and feels shame, especially in this energy center. And then let's make sure everyone in the society, society is self-policing. They'll throw stones at that woman if she even begins to explore her sexual energy. So hooking shame with life force, what? How could that possibly be wrong? How could shame, how could sexuality, aliveness, creativity, that blessing of divinity, the greatest blessing of divinity, how could that be wrong and shameful? I mean, when you open your eyes, you're like, what? There's no way anyone would believe that. Oh, but yeah, like almost our whole society has bought into that. When we're kept in fear, it's really what like locks the system in place that we don't begin to know our sovereignty. We don't begin to look and explore, wait a minute, what else is possible here? What if I am powerful? What if none of this matters? I mean, there's a lot happening right now with people getting the experimental injection and people not getting the experimental injection. And then we're like <gasps> afraid of each other. But what if we go beyond fear, whatever the side of your equation, you're like, I've been injected and now thousands and thousands of people have been dying within 24 to 48 hours of the experimental injection. Hundreds of thousands of people have had severe injuries or illness right after the experimental injection. And you're like, oh no, fear. Okay, that's one way to you know contract your system down or vice versa. I'm not going to do the experimental injection. I'm not going to let this happen. I'm going to fight against it. And now we're seeing that those who have been injected are actually affecting, having some kind of effect on those who haven't, right? Like being around someone who's been injected is actually having a physiologic effect on your body. <gasps> Fear contraction. What if we stay instead to 
what else is possible here? Because we have seen scientifically that your psycho neuroendocrine immunologic system is all connected. And that when you align with what else is possible here? Curiosity. When you align with what would it take for me to remember I'm sovereign? Serenity. When you align with, I embrace what's happening exactly as it's happening. I embrace this fear and everything that's in my body now. Love and acceptance. There is something very, very powerful that's ignited in your body physically immediately that goes beyond like every toxin that we've ever seen anyone be exposed to. Arsenic, <laughs> experimental injections with hydrogel that's like activated by Wi-Fi. I mean, even those things that are like, whoa, that's gotta be pretty bad. Your system has a wisdom that can override all of that. Are you willing to trust it? Are you willing to activate it? All right, I haven't gotten to say hello to everyone because I launched right in here, but I do want to welcome everyone who's here live from lots of different places all over the world. I'm so grateful to have you guys here. And everyone, thanks for the hearts here in uh, Instagram as well. Is this resonating? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, good, good, good. I'm glad things are are going, are working well here. So um, what are the fears? What could the fears possibly be when you begin to let yourself know that you're sovereign? And you're sovereign doesn't mean, now I won't listen to them and nothing bad will happen. I'm sovereign means unconditionally there's wholeness. Our DNA is changing to, to, from a carbon-based DNA to a crystalline DNA. And some of you who are super empathic, highly sensitive, already know and understand a lot about that. <laughs> and some of you might be like, what the heck? What? But what if what's happening right now is for us to rise above fear, to rise beyond fear and see what happens then? What happens in the body? Where's the resilience? What might be possible that we never imagined? There will be um, what I've been learning um even more manipulations, right? Beyond just, there's this scary, invisible thing that you can't see and you don't know where it is and it could kill you. Whoa, that's pretty scary. Is that true? There's even bigger manipulations that are in the works right now that kind of make that pale in comparison. And if you are unwilling to buy into fear under any circumstances, it will not matter. You will see the truth. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Period. The end. Always and completely. Fear is false evidence appearing real. I remember it was like two years ago, Matt Kahn did a, um, a broadcast about false evidence appearing real with fear. And he said, fear is evidence that the opposite is true. <laughs> so fear is like, oh no, it's not okay. I won't be okay. Nothing will work out. Oh, fear coming up is evidence. It's your body registering that the opposite is true because your body knows that's a lie and it feels bad when you buy into a lie. So what is it? It's your body telling you, no, 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 that's not true for you. I thought that was a really genius way to understand it. <laughs> I know I do speak really fast. Or land or excited, Orion, or land. How about we just listen? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'll do the best I can. And that's been my um, kind of life journey is to slow down to meet the consciousness that's coming through instead of like speeding up to try to <gasps> make sure it doesn't move through too fast. And that's uh, definitely been a great teacher for me is there's nowhere to get. <laughs> Be where you are. And I know that's, um, yeah, like how can I invite anyone else to live beyond fear if I'm still like 2% in my own excitement, which can actually be like fear, I got to get all the words out. I've got to speak faster. That's urgency. So where is like urgency still living in me 2%? That's for me to own and that's for me to actually look at. And I really appreciate that feedback. There's nowhere to get. There's nowhere to get. We are 
already whole. Which doesn't make sense in the mind because we're like living in separation. But it's true nonetheless. And we can access that truth. Thank you for this sharing, which is extraordinary. I've known bits of this for almost 25 years and been blessed by the help of osteopaths, chiropractors. A chiropractor actually discovered I was having a brain hemorrhage and saved my life. Thanks for this great and truthful historical overview and invitation. Yeah, and, and I've even had like in the osteopathic profession, some of my mentors who bought into the idea that the, these other practitioners were bad and we were superior. So hierarchy is always a lie. That's that like patriarchy. We'll take care of you. We'll make sure all those quacks and charlatans don't have anything to do with you because you obviously can't think for yourself. Wait, it's the premise that I'm not capable of choosing for myself, seeing for myself, thinking for myself. Is that true? Is that true that I'm powerless, helpless? Because if we stay in the foundation of I'm powerless and I'm helpless, we're always going to be in lack. And there'll always be someone who will love to take advantage of our choice. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll save you. And to profit from our choice, right? If I choose to be in fear, lack, and buy into the idea of limitation, it's always going to create a window for someone to manipulate me. But the way I've learned to understand this is <laughs> it's still serving my awakening. So I make another choice. Whenever I've been in like an abusive relationship or a manipulative relationship, it's externalizing the thing I bought into. You can't always see your beliefs. I don't really feel like I'm good enough. So let me make sure this person likes me and do what they want me to do. You can't always see that belief, but you can see the outcome of it. You can see, oh, I just got so hurt that they just dropped me on my butt and betrayed me. <laughs> you can see the behaviors. In fact, there's like a whole little piece that came up around this in a private session with someone yesterday. I think I'll share it maybe next week uh, on the broadcast where that's the, the inner space of our foundation. I'm not good enough. I can't think for myself. The world's not safe. I'm not powerful. Will be externalized and it shows up in our circumstances, right? But that's showing up to feedback so we can see it and make a new decision. So we can see it and go, wait a minute, is that really true? What if I am powerful? What if I don't need this person? And then we're like, think, we just got rid of that relationship because we've shifted in consciousness. Um, Toshua, and I've seen this since before I even became a doctor. Like, there's something wrong with this picture. What's going on here? Toshua, making a new choice to stop beta blockers. My blood pressure is going low. And I have COVID right now. I have to learn how to trust myself. I have Lyme disease also treating with a rife machine. Well, look at that. Is this, is this medication assisting me? Don't have judgment about it, that it's bad and it's wrong because it's synthetic. Just get curious. Is this assisting my health? And let the clarity come in. You know, and you can... I'm not going to say just go cold turkey off a of medication, like get the medical assistance you need from someone you trust. But the point I'm making is do begin to look, do begin to ask. Fear, 80% of blood leaves the prefrontal cortex in fight or flight. Therefore, you can't think, much less think for yourself. Thanks, Paige. And the, and the prefrontal cortex is like our reasoning, our cognitive judgment of like, wait a minute, should I go left or right? <laughs> and when we aren't in that, uh, we're not really tuning in. We're in the program, right? So then the media is like, go left, go right, jump, jump higher, right? Stay inside. Don't go out. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't talk to your neighbor. Tell on your neighbor. And you're like, okay, I'll do what you're telling me. You're a puppet. You're programmed. And I'm not saying any of those things are the right or the wrong thing to do, are, are the beneficial or the, are the detrimental thing to do. I'm saying you can't know if you're not like putting blood to your own brain. You're just a puppet in a program. <laughs> Thanks, Lily. <laughs> Moves me to tears in the most positive ways. 
the one thing I do want to really bring home is, yeah, there's this medical monopoly that kind of like disguised itself as our savior. And at the same time, like put toxins in our food, our water, and our air. So like cancer is prevalent and glyphosates are prevalent, which have been shown to cause cancer and have been shown to cause disease and have been shown to cause diabetes, like conclusively. And then those were all kept out of the media because, hey, we could get in a lot of trouble here and this is our monopoly after all. There's conspiracy going on. That's been documented and that's been actually um, uh, uh, concluded. <laughs> so this is not theory. These are facts. There have been conspiracies in these monopolies of industries, of medicine and medical meccas, of uh, political realms. This is not theory. But we don't notice any of that or look when we're in fear. So my invitation to you, which is really my invitation to myself, Find serenity in the body just by breathing 2% slower. For me, 2% slower is as still fast, like someone mentioned here. Oh my God, yeah. And that 2% makes a massive difference. Because if I come from that, yeah, 2% scared, and I'm like, oh, let me just like release a little bit of that, my power exponentially increased. You can hear it in the voice of someone in fear. They may be sharing the exact same information I shared, but it makes you scared like, oh crap, we're in trouble. <laughs> and to the degree that we embody our own serenity, it's contagious. Like we know this and there's no fear. We can know a lot more and there's still no fear. So whatever may happen in the next several months with the media saying, there's an even bigger threat, we must globally unite in war. Don't buy it. Fear is false evidence appearing real. What if the power is in uniting in serenity? What if the power is in uniting in love? This has been conclusively shown scientifically to neutralize pathogenicity, meaning disease, uh, the, the disease causing effects of toxins or viruses or bacteria. It neutralizes the disease effect, the pathogenicity. Whoa, really? Yeah. So we have more than enough evidence, science, data to like heal the world 10 times over. But who has been uh, determining what is deemed real science that makes it into the prominent journals and what gets thrown out? There have been more than enough studies that are like sharing this message. This is a bad thing. You should be scared. And the next day, like, oh, wait, we found new data and they retract it. But which one made the mainstream headline? the announcement or the retraction. <laughs> so if you stay in fear, you're just gonna keep seeing those headlines. Uh, more reasons to be afraid. Faith over fear, Mari, yes. Do you not think C19 is a real virus? Viruses or what they call viruses, these um, informational packets, like information data, are real, they've always been here since the beginning of time. Zach Bush is a great person to listen to on this. He's a MD um, uh, physician um, who's basically really studied a lot about the microbiome and consciousness and frequency and what is, are we actually in battle with these microorganisms or are we living in harmony with these microorganisms? 85% of the DNA in our bodies came from bacteria and viruses. Like the resilience that we have, the ability to stay healthy. In fact, there's certain viruses, it's been shown, um, the measles viruses, um, rubella virus, chickenpox virus. When someone experiences that naturally occurring infection as a child, they go on to have greater resilience to multiple forms of cancer meaning they're less likely to develop those cancers because of the information encoded from that experience and exchange with that virus. 
it changes our immune system, changes every cell in our body, it changes our DNA. That's a natural harmonious relationship. There are other things we're injecting into the body that are not natural and are not necessarily created from wisdom, meaning what do they actually do to our body? Is it in the long-term beneficial? We have no idea. So we're kind of playing God a lot with this, uh, quote, allopathic medical system that thinks we know everything about everything. So we're manipulating everything. The only way we ever would buy into that is if we're in fear. Because when we come into serenity, it is so obvious that that really doesn't make sense as the treatment for everything, all of the above. It's great, like I said in the beginning, for acute care situations. It's great if you're in excruciating pain, let's get you out of pain. But hey, of course, we also need to remove your appendix or we also need to remove the offending agent. Um, it's great if you're in a, a trauma or a critical care situation. But for all the other things we're pretending to apply it to, yes, fear is absolutely making the situation worse. This is not a theory. This has been definitively shown. We've been measuring this. Um, in multiple ways. In fact, when we look at the states that have stayed on lockdown with continued testing and continued suppression, they've done much, much worse. When we look at the states that have been freed, they release the uh, lockdown, they're um, not testing to the same degree people have lived. There's been a way lower death rate and incidence of illness. How do you deal with people around not getting the treatment and not getting oxygen around how to deal with that anxiety. My anxiety is my anxiety. That's how I'll always come back. The Ho'oponopono, what's happening in me is for me to transmute. Whether it's my um, challenge with other people or being triggered by what they're doing or what they're saying to me what my experience is, is what's here for me to transmute, meet your fear. All doctors, politicians, etc., need to find a balance. Um, I think that um, we need to wake up and begin to, uh, to get some clarity. So a different topic. Sometimes I have trouble discerning how far is too far to go down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories. You don't need to go down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories, which I'm prone to do. So notice, am I doing this to fill a hole, make myself feel better? Because what you know is what you know. I didn't have to learn any of that in any of the books I read. I already knew before I even became a doctor. There's some, it's, it's a frequency. Corruption is a frequency. You can smell it a mile away. It does help to get information that confirms it. But if you aren't really letting yourself know what you know, you're going to be digging away for like more information and more evidence to confirm what you know. So make it the other way around. I trust what I know. I'm willing to choose from what I know. And yeah, I'm willing to gather some uh, information that helps me get some clarity on that. But if it's the other way around, I don't trust what I know. Let me get more information. You're going to just keep digging around and digging around. It will never actually have you feel um, the wholeness. Hmm. And yeah, it's like some of it's true. What's not true? What's true? If you're looking outside yourself for the truth, you're going to continue to go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> All right. Yeah, just trust your gut. Oh. Uh, Playing God is exactly what I've been saying about all of this. Well, the truth is what we do know in like every medical textbook that's ever been written in the history of the world and every scientific study that's ever been done in, in our um, experience is still infinitesimally small compared to what we don't know. So we always have to make room for nature, we're meant to live in cohesion and cooperation with nature, not in a war with nature. Again, something that sounds so obvious, but we're in, when we're in fear, we're buying into the storyline that puts us in war with nature. Yeah, who's benefiting from that war? Who's profiting from that war? Not the individual, 
but certainly the monopoly. So let, let your eyes be open to the fact that you're the one with the power and you regain that power when you come back into serenity. Mm-hmm. Thanks, you guys, for being here. I'll be here every week, 11 a.m. Mountain, starting next week. Um, we're going to do a series from individuals who've worked with me in the Embracing Health program who have come through this journey from the doctor told me I'd never heal. I had 10 diagnoses and 20 medications. Uh, I was in the bed for three years and, you know, it, chronically ill to... I am completely healed off medications functioning in the world, or even for some, like maybe there's still some things going on, but no longer living in the delusion and beginning to heal and regain their power and have that translate into physical results. So I want people to be aware of what's actually out there versus what um, the uh, storyline might have you believe about our health, about medicine and about disease. When you hear from individuals, it's a lot easier to understand like, could this be possible for me? Especially because they'll each be sharing their journey of how they felt like, oh, well, this is for other people, but not for me. Or hopelessness of like, why isn't this working for me? Um, and ultimately came through that to discover something much higher. So um, we will begin that series next week. Uh, we'll be here every week at 11 a.m. Mountain in uh, the Mind Body community and Facebook on um, my YouTube channel. Definitely subscribe, hit the bell if you would like to be alerted when um, when we go live. We are also here on Instagram, so hello. I've been pretty good about this the last few weeks, but that's not necessarily always gonna happen. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to share there as well so we can connect privately. Yeah, so always question fear, false evidence appearing real. Is this true for me? <sighs> What else is possible? We are moving into sovereignty. Most people have heard like we're functioning with like 3% of our brain. So obviously the 3% brain can't like fix all the problems of the world. But if we even just allow slight increase of uh, uh, slowing our breath, thank you for the reminder, relaxing our shoulders, so much more happens for us. All right. Lots of love. I'm at drkimd.com. Share this video with those that you love. Invite them to begin to witness the power inside them. And uh, I'm excited for our growing community, for our connection. I love you guys. I'm so glad I could share this with you. I'll see you soon. Bye.